Hi, it's Jordantine One, and today I'll be showing you how to make this really cute little Lumagurumi beach ball. So it's pretty small in size, it fits nicely in the palm of your hand. It's probably about two and a half inches wide, and the one I'll be showing you today is this rainbow colored one. This was my first one, sort of those classic beach ball colors that I made as a sample. So I think either way they look really cute. To make this beach ball you're going to need a hook of some sort and I'm going to be using a rainbow loom metal hook but you can use a crochet hook or whatever you have. You'll need some kind of stuffing so I have some polyfill. And then I'm going to be using a twist tie to make the magic ring but that's optional. I have an S clip, you can use any kind of clip or stitch marker. And then for your bands, you're going to need about 320 bands. So I have 50 of each of the six rainbow colors and then 20 of the white. We're going to begin by making a magic ring of three. So for that, you're going to need four rubber bands. You need one of your clips and then I'm also using this twist tie just to get me started. So I'm going to just put the twist tie up against my hook. If you don't have one, you'll just use your plain hook. And then I'm taking my first rubber band, I'm going to triple this. So I just place it on, twist, and then put it back on, twist, and put it back on again. So there's three loops on there. And then I am just pull it up, bend it in half, and that just helps keep those three loops together. And then I'm going to pull through my first rubber band, goes through those three and then go back on your hook and then one end pulls through the other go back through from the front side pull through my second band get it back on my hook so I have the three loops and one pulls through the other two and then one more time back through from the front pull it through back on your hook and then the end one will pull through the other two. So now I can take out my twist tie and I just want to use my clip or your stitch marker and put it on the rubber band that's around your hook. In row two we'll be using six rubber bands and we're doing two single crochet into each one of our three stitches. So here's our magic ring that we made and the next thing I'm going to have you do is stretch this out. I know since we only have three into our magic ring it's not very full of a circle but just take a couple seconds and stretch this out to try and even them out. And then you want to go over to your left here and on this edge here is where you'll find the stitch. It's like a little sideways V and you're just going through from the front you want to go under both loops take your first band it's going to pull through and go back on your hook so you'll have the three loops and one will pull through the other two and then you want to go under that same stitch so go under those same two loops pull through back on your hook and again with the three one pulls through the other two then you're just going to move over to your next stitch Again, make sure you're going under both loops. And you're going to do one single crochet and then back through for your second. And then one more here, it should be where your clip is or your marker. You're going under that and you're just going to do two single crochet into that same stitch. And then you want to just move your clip or your stitch marker and put it around the band that your hook is on. In row three, we're doing two single crochet into each one of the stitches again. So you're going to need 12 rubber bands. And you can see I have two of each one of my six colors. So I'm just moving over to this next stitch and you will notice that it's kind of closing in so you can just stretch this out a bit 
I'm going over to my next stitch here to the left. Again, it's a little bit of a longer stretch than maybe you're used to since we only have that small magic ring. So I'm just going to pull through and now what I'm going to do different is I'm also going to go through the white one. Get this back on my hook so now this time there's only two loops and one pulls through the other. So that's what's called a slip stitch and we're going to be doing a lot of those just because we're going to be changing colors a lot. And then I'm going under that same stitch and I'll pull through my second pink. And then move over and here I'm going to be switching colors. So I'm doing a slip stitch. I'm going under but then I also want to go through the pink back on your hook for the two loops and one through the other. And now my second orange. I don't have to do a slip stitch if I'm keeping the same color. Going to the next one. Now I do need to do a slip stitch so you just pull through all back on. And now this one's just regular. Next, again, a slip stitch. Back through that same one for a regular single crochet. This time the slip stitch. And then a regular. And then finally at the end here in your last one where your clip is, you should have two left. So there's my first one that is a slip stitch. And let me just move this clip out of the way. And then here's my second one that's just normal. And now I'm just going to add my clip here. So you can see how it's starting to look. In row four, I have 18 rubber bands. I have three of each of my colors and I'm following the pattern of two, one, two, one, and so on. So here's what we've got so far. We always want the colors to keep lining up. Now what I want to share with you before we start is when we do a slip stitch, it gets a little bit confusing because if you look here at my pink, it looks like I might have three stitches to go through, but I actually do only have two because when you do a slip stitch, it makes like a little half stitch and it's not a true stitch. So every time you're changing to a new color, you have to just realize that the very first stitch or little half stitch is not a true stitch, so you're skipping that. So truthfully, I only have two pink that I'm going through. So I'm ignoring this first little one, going through the next one, and I have two single crochet to go through. So here's my first one, and since I am changing colors, I'm gonna need to go through the purple as well, back on, and one through the other. And then through that very same stitch, I'm going through again to do my second single crochet. And then I'm moving over to the next one, and I have just one. And now we're going on to the orange, and again, it's going to look like you might have three stitches. The very first one is smaller, and it's a little bit maybe facing more upward than straight across. You're skipping that one. So going to that next one over, we have two single crochet. And we are changing color, so let me do that slip stitch. Going through for a second one in that same stitch. And then moving over, we have one orange left. Again, you're ignoring this first little one for the yellow. Changing color, so I have to go through all. Second one through the same. And then one 
one more for the next. Skipping this first green. Go through all and a second time. Next stitch, just one. So hopefully you're getting the hang of it. I know it's maybe a little bit confusing, so skipping this first. Go through all. Same stitch. And then over to the next. Again here with the purple, ignore the first little one here. Gonna pull through all. Same stitch a second time. And then at the end here, let me just take off my clip. Going through that last one. And then put on my clip. You're going to need 24 bands for row 5, and you're going to have 4 of each of your colors. We're following the pattern of 2, 1, 1 every time. So it's going to be basically the same thing we've just been doing. You're going to have to ignore this first little one. You can see here that you have 3 stitches that you're going to be going through. That's what you need to work with. But if you look here, you have this little half one that sort of sticks straight up. Just ignore that. So in my first one, I'm doing the two single crochet. I'm going to change colors here. So that's my first one. And then in through that same stitch for my second. And then you should have two pink left or whatever color you're doing. So it's just going to be one single crochet into each of those. And now again, I'm ignoring this first little half. I'm not going to keep repeating this a million times, but I just want to make sure you're going through the right ones. So change that color, so do your slip. Through that same one for a second. And then I should have two single crochet left, one for each stitch of the orange. And you'll notice from doing that slip stitch that your next color sort of sticks out a little bit. If you look here, it's kind of a little bit jagged the way that it looks. So I'm on to the yellow here. I know it's actually pretty easy to forget to do a slip stitch. And it's really not the end of the world if you do forget. It's just going to be more noticeable where you change the colors. The one color is going to sort of bleed into the other. So that's why we do the slip stitch to keep the same colors up against one another. Now onto my green. So that was my first one and I'm doing my second one in that stitch. And then one in each of the next two. Over to the next. And this is our last row of increases. After this, we're going to do several rows of the same, of 24. So that was one. Here's my second. And then there's two stitches left of blue. And now here's my purple. And through again.
and then two more here so that's my first and then lastly through the clip and then I'll just move it in row six you'll need 24 bands I have four of each color but you can see I have them laid out with three pink to start and then one pink at the end and then four for the rest of the colors. So here's where we're at. We're going to do our next stitch here. They're all going to be single crochet, one in each. So I'm starting with a pink, doing that slip stitch. And then I have two more even though I do have four pink stitches, I'm only doing three because I want the pattern to be offset. So from now on for this main section here or the main body of the ball, we're going to be doing um, and every other row, the first row is going to be offset and then the second row will line up and then it will just keep repeating. So even though I have a pink stitch left, I'm switching to my orange. So I need to do a slip stitch. and then just continue on with one in each and again you're always going to have one stitch that's the color you're working on you're going to have an extra one that's going to switch to the next color so even though I have an orange left I'm ready to start my yellow I know it can be a little bit confusing, but if you don't do it this way, the colors are just going to shift over one every row and you're going to wind up with more of like a diagonal pattern, which actually is a really cool look too, but it's just not what we want for the beach ball. We want our colors to be in line. So I have one yellow stitch left and I'm switching to my green. Pulled that one through a little bit too far. And then I have this one green left that's going to start the blue. And then finally I'm going to have one blue left that starts the purple. Just don't forget to do your slip stitches every time you're changing that color. And then in my last one where the clip is, it's still going to be purple, but my color that I'm putting through is a pink. And now I'm just going to move my clip. Row 7 is going to be a repeat of row 6, but I'm calling this an even row because this time the colors are going to line up. So we're already doing pink here, and again, don't be confused, this very first one, even though it looks like it might be a stitch, is really your slip stitch. So you actually have three pink left to go through, and we have three bands, that's why I'm calling this an even row. You don't have to do a slip stitch since we're already doing pink, but your last pink band is going to be in that last pink stitch before the color switches. And now you have your four orange that are going to line up. Whoops, I didn't do my slip stitch. It's very easy to forget that. I do it all the time and then I just have to backtrack. And 
And now I'm onto the yellow here. So hopefully everyone is getting the hang of this. I know that it can definitely be very confusing with all of the slip stitches that you have to do and then not being sure which ones to go under. But I actually did initially try and make this with separate pieces and then just sew the individual pieces together and I just found that a lot more difficult to do. I think it's definitely easier even though it has still has some confusion it's easier to work in continuous rounds So as long as you remember the pattern of every other row, they're going to be offset, and then every other row will be lined up. So go through blue here. And then I'm on to my purple. Again, they're all lining up. And then you should have one pink left or whatever your first color was. And it should be where your clip is. And I just have to do that slip stitch and then move the clip. In row 8 you'll need 24 bands and the way that our pattern is going to work is we're starting with two of your first color, four for each of the rest, and then two at the end. So since our last row was even, this one's going to be offset. So I'm just going to this next pink, and we're just beginning with the two. So for one in each, that's the first and second. And now we want to do an orange in this last pink stitch. Remember they're not lining up this time. So just change that color. And then there's three more orange. So that's one. Two. And three. And then again in the last orange we'll start the yellow. So basically this is just going to repeat for the next several rows. Um, up through row 14 with this pattern of one single crochet in each. It's only the shifting of the colors that you have to really worry about. And now we have the green, so the last yellow gets the first green. And now this last green starts the blue. Oops, got to do that slip stitch. Always have to keep correcting myself. And now in the last blue stitch, we're going to start the purple. Whoops, picked up a pink there. And 
And then in our last two here, we're going to do pink. So one's going through a purple stitch. So do your slip stitch. And then the last one where the clip is, is pink. Row 9 is set up the same way as row 8 with two of your first color at the start and then two at the finish. And this time we're going to have an even row so the colors will line up. So I'm just going to my next stitch here. I have two pink. So that's one, two, and now my oranges are lining up. Doing that slip stitch. So as I said, we're going to be repeating this pattern through row 14. And normally when I do any kind of Lumigurumi tutorial, for the middle section where it's just a lot of repeated stitches with one single crochet in each, I just say I'll let you do that on your own. But I was hesitant to do it with this one only because with the shifting of the rows it does get confusing. But I think what I am going to start to do after this row is just to show you the beginning pattern and then fast forward and then show you the ending. Just because it's going to get very long if I have to keep showing every single row. And really this isn't that big of a project. So I'm going to finish out this row with you and then I'll start to, as I said, just show you the beginning and the end of a row and do the fast forwarding in the middle. So now I'm onto my blue. And now my purple. So it should be all be lining up for you. And then at the end here, you should have two pink left. So that's my first, and then the last one here, and move the clip. Row 10 is an offset row, and again our colors have to shift a little bit to keep in line with one another. So we're still starting with pink, but we only have one pink at the beginning and then three at the end. Again four in each of the rows. So I'm just doing that one pink at the beginning. And then I want my colors to change right away. So the last pink stitch is going to start the orange because this is the offset row. So do that slip stitch and then just follow along. So as I said, I'm going to do some fast forwarding here. And then here at the end, you're doing a pink in your last purple. And then there should be two pink left, or whatever that first color is you are using. And then the last one is where the clip is. Row 11 is set up the same as row 10 with one of your first color at the start and three at the ending. And this time it's an even, so your colors are going to line up. So we have just one pink that will line up with our pink. And 
and then all the rest should be in line. So again, I will just fast forward. And now my last three pink, again, they're lining up. And here's our last one. In row 12, this is our color pattern. So you can see that we had to shift our colors again. So this time our first color is now our last color. So you're starting with your second color and you have four in each one. Again, they are not going to line up this time. So my first stitch is going to be pink, even though my color is orange. And then at the end here, in the last purple, we're switching to our pink. And then there's three more pinks left. And then just move this clip. For row 13, it's going to be set up the same way as row 12. So again, we're starting with our second color, which is orange, and then ending with what was our first color. And this row is going to be even. So I ended on a pink here. I'm ready to move on to the orange. And they're all going to line up. And now the last four pink are right on top of the four pink stitches. So we're almost getting done here, getting near the end. In row 14, this is our last row of single crochet before we start decreasing. So you can see our colors have shifted once again. So you're going to start with three of your second color and then end with one of that same color. So this is an offset row. So I'm doing my next orange here. There's only going to be three to start. Now I have my last three bands here to do. So I have two pink. And then in this last pink stitch where my clip is, it's going to be the last orange. In row 15, you're going to need 18 rubber bands. It's going to be three of each of the colors. We're starting with two oranges, and everywhere that I have a clip, it means it's going to be a decrease, which means two stitches are going to go together. So we're starting out with a decrease, and I will show you how to do that. This first little orange is our slip stitch, so you're ignoring that. And then these next two orange stitches are going together. Now normally in my other videos when I do a decrease I go under both sets of stitches but actually somebody from our Facebook group and I don't know the name off the top of my head had suggested just going through the outer loops it's a little bit easier and I found it a lot nicer the overall look of it. So normally you go under both of the loops of a stitch this time we're just going through the outer loop. 
So here's our first one. I'm pushing through in the middle of that V um, from front to back. I'm just going to go through that outer loop. Then I'm going to pull back towards myself and do the same thing for the next stitch. Just go through that outer loop. So you have three bands on your hook. Taking our first orange here and it's going to pull through the first two go back on like a regular single crochet and one will pull through the other two. And now in our next one we're doing a regular stitch, a single crochet, so I'm going under both loops and doing my next orange. And now we're doing a regular in the first yellow. Do that slip stitch. And then the next one is where it goes together. Again, I'm just doing those outer loops. So I'm pushing through from the middle, going through that first one, pulling back, going through that second one. This is going to pull through the first two, back on your hook, and one through the other two. And then in the next one, we have just a regular single crochet. So that's the pattern we're going to be following. Here's the next one. It's always that middle one that we're going to do the decrease on with the exception of that first one. So I'm doing a regular single crochet into the first green. Then the next two are going together. And if you wanted to go under all four loops, you certainly can do that. I just found that it looked a little bit nicer when you're done. And then under that last green, and out onto the blue, we have a regular first. And then the next two stitches together. And then another regular. So I know my bands have gotten messed up here that were underneath. And now for the purple, we have the first one, the next two together. Sometimes those bands do want to get hung up there. And then another regular. We're onto the pink here. So those middle two stitches go together. And then at the very end, you have one orange that's left, and that should be where your clip is. Just do a slip stitch with that, and move your clip. For row 16, you're going to need 12 rubber bands, two of each of the colors. We're going to start out with a decrease, and then we're going to do a decrease for every other. So here's our orange, the first two here we're going to put together. Again, I'm just going through these outer loops. And then the next one's going to be a regular, so my yellow is regular to do that slip stitch. And then the next two yellow go together. And then my next green, just a single crochet, do that slip stitch. And then the next two green, there's a decrease. And don't worry if your ball looks like it's kind of caving in the way mine is, because once we get the stuffing in, you won't notice that at all. And actually after we do this, I'm going to put it in 
So I have just one regular and then a decrease. And now onto purple. And then a decrease. And now I have pink. And a decrease. The tighter that this gets, the smaller that this opening gets, the harder it is to kind of see what you're doing. And then one more here where the clip is, is just a regular orange. And let me just get this clip back on. And now before my opening gets any smaller at the top, I am going to add my polyfill here. So I'm just going to take smaller sections at a time and stuff it. I think I'm probably going to need more than what I have out here. You don't want to stuff it too full that it's showing through the stitches, but you want it to be pretty nice and round. So I think this should do it here. Now for row 17, I have six white rubber bands. We're going to really try and close this off now. So we're going to do a decrease with every band. So I'm starting with my orange here. Go through that outer loop and then the next one. And I'll pull through my white. Actually, I'll pull through all since I'm changing colors back on my hook. And you're going to have to sort of fight this fluff. Just keep it pushed down with your finger if you can. And I'm going to pull through the next two. So this time I have a yellow and a green. Just don't forget, don't go in those false stitches, those slip stitches. And try your best not to stretch the bands out. I know that they can definitely get stretched out here. So I'm going through a green and then a blue. And it is definitely easy for your hook to get hung up. Now through the next two. And then I'm going to go through the purple and pink ones. And then finally the pink and the orange. Let me just get this clip out of the way. And then finally at the bottom here I just have a couple white bands and I just have to close this all off. So this is really just using your best judgment to close off any holes. I'm going to go under this orange one and just go through a couple more here to sort of stitch those together, do like a decrease. You don't want to pull them too tightly because you don't want to leave any holes at the bottom. But you also don't want to build it up so that it sticks out and gets all puffy down there. So I think I'll do one more here. Just close that off. I think that looks pretty good. And then let me just grab one more white band here and I'll just go underneath something 
And let me just pull this through everything that's on my hook, get the other end back on and make a really nice tight slip knot. And then I just need to hide this loop. So if there's anywhere that looks like it's a gap, you can sort of tuck the band under there so it sort of hides that opening. And if you think that you have any spaces that look like they're too opened up, you can always use some extra bands. It looks like right here is a little bit of a gap, um, but I'm not going to do anything about that. So here is your beach ball, and you can mess around with it, squeeze it, and get the stuffing to go where it needs to go. But I think it turns out pretty neat. I really like it. I made this other one here um, the other week, and my kids have been playing with it, throwing it around for the last couple weeks. So they've been having a lot of fun with it. I hope that everyone loves their new Lumagurumi Beach Balls. You can always leave me comments on YouTube and Facebook. Post pictures of your creations to my Facebook page. And please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can stay up to date on my latest tutorials. You can also find me on Pinterest and Instagram, so please feel free to subscribe to those as well. Thanks for watching!